loves it's Liv and a couple of weeks ago I quit my job something that I would have never thought I would have said thought of done but I did and I have so much to share with you guys it feels like I haven't spoken to you guys in what seems to be over a year there's so much going on so much I have to update you on and it's going to take more than one life update video to catch you all up but I figured let's start here so today I wanted to take a seat, stop everything, reflect, and kind of talk it out with you guys to kind of go through why did I quit my job, what's led me to this point, <laughs> what's next, and what's gotten me through it all. So let's get started. I'm making this video for a number of reasons. One of them is so that I can look back at it and just be so proud of myself for finally taking that leap. But the other is to kind of make it real by saying it out loud and sharing it with you guys, making it real that I quit, I'm not going back, and I'm deciding to pursue my dreams full time. Ah! To be honest, I haven't really told any of my friends or much of my family, so if you guys are seeing this surprise. So how do I feel right now? Right now, I feel a lot of things. There's feelings of fear, guilt, shame. There's some doubt. There's a tremendous amount of doubt. And there's this overwhelming feeling of being irresponsible. But at the same time, there's feelings of joy and happiness and then there's also this overwhelming feeling of courage and bravery but let me give you guys some context and kind of backtrack and pretty much explain why did i quit my job so i was working for a nonprofit, a community-based nonprofit, um and i've been for the been in the company for what feels to be about five years i was promoted during my time there and my last role the role that i currently just left i was the director of arts something that i never thought i would actually be doing um being that i'm way more passionate about um education and wellness and mental health but that's kind of where i wound it up on my journey of just climbing the career ladder and Throughout my time there, throughout my promotions, throughout my work there, I loved the work that I did. The work that I did wasn't the problem. I loved the work that I did. The problem that I had and that's kind of accumulated over the years was more than that. Being that it was a nonprofit, if you guys have ever worked for a nonprofit, I most definitely was working more than eight hours. I felt like I was working 10 hours, um, 10 to 11 hours on average. And you can imagine how exhausting that is. I did not like my work environment. Um, there was a lot of toxicity um, vibes that just did not align with who I am and, and how I communicate and work around with others. And, you know, at first I thought that was something I could just get over and it would be perfectly fine. But as the years progressed and as the pandemic hit and, and as things began to change, I started to realize that it's this year 28 and I want you to be able to look back at your life and know that you made the right decisions for you and not the decision that felt good or looked good or did good. That you made the right decisions for you. And during my time there, I just started to slowly become more and more unhappy. And it's not only just about happiness because I've worked at jobs where I wasn't happy before and just, you know, pushed through and carried on. But as I was developing more and more on my self-love journey, the more I realized that I don't have to be unhappy. And I don't have to feel like I'm in a toxic relation relationship with my employer. I don't have to feel stuck. I can make my own decisions. And yes, I have responsibilities, which is why I always felt like maybe this wasn't the time. But like, when was going to be the time? Like, when was the time going to be right? 
And that's when I kind of realized that I have to stop waiting for the time to be right in order to do what I want to do. I don't have to wait for the right, perfect time within the universe's cycle to know that this time, Tuesday at 9 a.m. next month, that's the perfect time for me to, to take a jump, to take a leaf, to take a leap. Not only did I realize that I wasn't happy, but I also realized that I was stretching myself too thin. So for some, con for some context, I was doing a lot. <laughs> Let me, let me explain to you guys all that I was doing. So I was working my nine to five um, job, like managerial level job. So I had staff, I had a lot on my plate. But at the same time, I started my own company and I was a CEO and founder. Well, I am, girl, speak into existence. <laughs> I am a CEO and founder of the self-love organization, which is an online wellness community and club for black women to learn to heal their transgenerational trauma together. And I have been working on my company since 2017, which is right around the time that I started working here. And, you know, at first it wasn't much, but then it started to become too much. On top of that, I started to go back to school. I was pursuing my master's degree to be the first woman, the first black woman, to have a master's with a concentration of self-love, self-therapy, and the black mental health experience. Something that I was extremely proud of. So I was managing all three of these things on top of my life, and it became too much. So the burnout that I was experiencing wasn't only from the, from the role I was coding, but was also from everything else. And every time I would think to myself, Denise, one day you are going to do this. One day you are going to work for yourself. One day you're going to be a boss. One day you're going to be the CEO that you want to marry. One day you are going to be that girl. And I kind of felt like I've been waiting for that day for a long time. And I started to realize that that day isn't going to show up, that I have to make that day happen. Now, let's be clear. I grew up in a Jamaican household. Quitting your job to not have another job is basically illegal. And it's not something that, my mom had a fit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I called her and I'm like, hey mom, I've wanted, you know, I've been thinking about something and I wanted to just like run it by you. Like I already made my decision, but I just wanted to, you know, like let you know, hear your thoughts, you know? Um, <laughs> so I was like, mom, I'm thinking of quitting my job. <laughs> and she was like, what <laughs> and then she started to reassure me of all of my doubts and no shade to my mom but growing up as an immigrant kid doing something like this is completely unheard of she had a hard time taking it and she pretty much reassured me of all of my doubts i have rent to pay you want to finish up school. You need to pay for that. You just moved into this apartment. What do you, how are you going to fund your business? How are you going to take care of yourself? And that I have a good job and I shouldn't let it go. The thing is that she's not wrong. I do have bills due. I do have tuition. I do have rent. I do need a financial plan and I don't have anyone to fall back on. So I need money. <laughs> but then I had to rebuttal and share with her all the things that I know to be true. That I'm smart, that I'm capable, that I wouldn't make a decision unless I knew in my heart that it was the right one. That I could do all things through Christ and that I could do this. I finally built enough courage to finally do it, to quit my job to leave the status behind of being a director, to leave the security of the 401k and, and health insurance and knowing that my rent will be paid consecutively every single time, the direct deposit, all of the things. And I packed my things, gave in my keys, closed the door, turned off the lights, closed my eyes, and I jumped and I jumped into faith and I took the leap that I wanted to take for all of these years. Something that I've been trying to practice is that if I over plan so many things and if we over plan so many things in our life, we don't allow room for faith. And I wanted to make room for faith. 
and take a leap of faith and just jump. <laughs> now, I'm coming to you guys all kind of figured out and centered and mellowed, but to be completely honest, I've been struggling. I kind of took three weeks off of social media or what seemed to be three weeks of just taking time to heal and vent and allow myself to sit in it. Allow myself to sit in my decision and all of the pros and cons, the negative, the positive, the doubts, the, 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 the courage, all the things that came with it. And I allowed myself to sit in it for like three weeks. And I didn't tell anyone because I wanted to make sure that I was secure within myself. And to be honest, I've been struggling. Today is one of my good days. And that's because I finally feel like, I finally feel secure within myself to know that I made the right decision. But day one didn't go like this. Day one, my first Monday, when I didn't have to rush out of here to go to work, day one was difficult. And here's how it went. So it's day one of me waking up Monday morning without a job. I'm working for myself and I just finished crying. <laughs> I had a meditation session and a yoga session this morning to kind of start me off right. And I just started bawling. And I think it's what I needed. I needed to kind of just let out all of my fears and all of my doubts and concerns. And I just had to have that moment following that I I gave myself a pep talk and I spoke to myself and told myself that at the end of the day you always got you you always got you and you're gonna be okay and if there's anyone that believes in you it's me <laughs> I'm gonna cry again but I feel like I needed to hear those words and I had to give them to myself because this is scary and this is full of fear and full of doubt and that's 100% natural and you know there was a sense of excitement this whole time like oh my gosh I don't have to go to work but I had to let this out I had to feel kind of like empty of those emotions and I had to cry it out and I had to yoga it out and I'm gonna journal later on today to just make sure that I'm secure in the way that I feel but one thing I did assure myself is that you made the right decision no decision is going to be easy, but I am convinced and I have full confidence that I made the right decision for myself and I was ready to invite faith into my life and to explore this new theme of courage into my life. So I quit my job. This feels good. This feels really good just to be able to like come and talk to you guys. And I don't know how many of you guys are still here or how many of you guys are listening or how many of my community is here supporting me on this journey but it feels good to have you here so thank you for being here i feel like majority of my life has been spent in this rush state like i've always i'm always rushing to work rushing to do something rushing to get something done rushing to get this degree rushing to get this job rushing to get this apartment i always feel like i've been rushing and i've been running and i think it's finally time for me to walk to allow the things that belong to me to come to me or for me to meet it halfway instead of what I have been doing or what I feel like I've been doing which is consistent like if this was the goal like consistently running at top speed um, and that's exhausting <laughs> there's this idea of hustle culture that I feel like a part of that is extremely toxic and needs to just needs to, just needs to relax where we have this idea and again this could be the caribbean immigrants kid mentality in me where i feel like i have to do these things and i need to be running at top speed and i need to perform 10 times better than everybody else and i need to do all these things this pandemic i honestly feel like has changed me and the fact that i've quote unquote made it out alive um i'm just ready to live my life differently if i am consistently running after something how can i how, how am i leaving space for the faith that he already has my life planned out and that he already is going to do these things for me or already have these things aligned and prepared for me. It's like I kind of had to change my mindset where 
I need to prepare for my blessings instead of running at top speed towards them. Because if my blessing were to come today, would I be prepared to receive it? And that's something that I've been, that's really been like within my mind for the last, since the pandemic. <laughs> so what's next? Well, I'm deciding that I'm going to focus on me, focus on my dreams, my passions, my goals, and I'm going to be a full-time entrepreneur. I'm going to full-time be the CEO of my company, the Self Love Organization. This is something that I've manifested and worked towards for years. I started my company in 2017, and this will be our full operating year. And this year, I have goals and I have dreams, and I'm going to manifest them today because I'm going to look back at this video and know that I did it. I'm going to look back at this video and be so proud of me. So I'm speaking it into existence. My company, the Self Love Organization, is going to open its membership and we are going to have thousands of members, thousands of black women ready to heal and end transgenerational trauma together. Thousands of women ready to prioritize mental health and wellness. Thousands of women who are ready to explore self-love together and form a community around doing it. My company, the Self-Love Organization, is going to publish self-love journals and we are going to completely sell out my company the self-love organization is going to be a six-figure company and i one day am going to be the ceo that i always dreamed of being i have no idea what i'm going to do tomorrow but how exciting i'm excited for this new journey of choosing me choosing my passions and choosing courage over fear i'm excited for this new journey of trying new things and relying on faith. I can do all things through Christ and I need to allow room for that to happen. I tend to be an over planner and now I'm just planning day by day. And a part of that is terrifying, but at the same time, sis, it is so exciting. I'm at a good space in my life right now where my only responsibility is me. I don't have a family um, or, or anything like that, that that I need to, you know, put a majority of my efforts in. At this moment of my life, my biggest priority is me. And I'm taking that seriously. So I'm taking the leap and... If you are thinking of taking the leap too, sis, I encourage you to do the same. Take the leap because you'll never get, we will never be able to look back and be like, I did that. Like I took the leap. When I tell you right now, I'm so scared and so nervous. But at the same time, I am so proud of myself. And I, I definitely was trying to get through this video without crying, but it's just, there is this overwhelming feeling of, of content and this overwhelming feeling of you're on the right path. And how do I know what's the right path if I don't try? I worked really hard to get the job that I had and I'm happy that I got it with its experience and the cushion salary and the apartment that I was able to get with it. But while I'm still on my lease, <laughs> I am going to jump and I'm going to try my best to make myself proud. So, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and will join me on the rest of this journey as I start this new chapter of my life. I'm scared, but I'm excited. And I hope that you also decide to choose courage over fear and faith over doubt i'll keep you guys updated on how everything goes but until then never forget to live in love